kinds of plagiarism that I've seen um, are, are hardly ever intentional or kind of evil or kind of darkly uh, about theft. Often students don't know what constitutes plagiarism. Um, a lot of times they think that that's exactly how you go about putting together a paper. One of the most exciting things about using plagiarism to teach with um, is not to be catching students or, or kind of um, foiling them at every turn, but to kind of explain this great tradition that we're all a part of. The key to or helping students succeed is to make sure that they have a process for being able to not just finish a paper, but more importantly, to start a paper. Because oftentimes as well, the, the hardest part is to get off the ground, and so that's why I tend to have a bunch of fairly small but easy steps at the beginning. Part of the challenge we have is um, giving students enough time to and enough information to deal with incorporating sources effectively, but also one of the problems that students have is they're under enormous amount of stress and they're trying to, at least in writing courses, they're trying to collapse a lot of work into 10 weeks. Um, so one of the things we do is try to organize sequenced assignments. In, in one assignment, asking for them to react to an issue or to a kind of hot topic or something that they feel very personally about. Um, and then in another assignment, I might ask them to simply find what they consider to be respectable sources or say the five best sources on a particular topic so that you're kind of separating how they confront the research that they find. And then hopefully there's time for something more integrative at the end, something that in which they can bring that passion from the first assignment and what they've found from the other assignment together into a kind of a reasonable blend of borrowed voices and then hopefully their own voice. One of the best strategies that I've used in the assignment sequence is to invite students to engage in interviews. And they can interview people who are uh, experts in that field, they can interview people who have um, passing knowledge, um, and they can analyze to what degree those sources uh, are accurate reflections of the kinds of things they want to explore in their paper. Yeah, the danger comes when students think that everything is opinion or that everything has the same degree of, of intellectual ownership. And so they either footnote too much or research too deeply or, or they're too rigorous about it or they, they figure that it's all up for grabs and that somehow everything is, is borrowable or everything can be lifted without any, any kind of consequence. And so it's, it's important to discuss um, the degrees of knowledge, the degrees to which somebody owns their idea and to which you have to be responsible about using that material. One other thing that I've used in class is to explore with students what, not what plagiarism is necessarily, but what intellectual property is and why that convention exists in Western society because it doesn't really exist in the same kind of way in other kinds of cultures. Well, I think one of the most important resources that, um, that students have in general for, for writing is, of course, the Writing Center. And one of the advantages, too, of, of having this kind of step-by-step -step process where they may be having to put together their annotated bibliography about week five of the quarter, it allows them to, or it allows me to encourage students who have weaknesses with writing and research to get in contact with the, the Writing Center early on. Part of the learning experience in writing for both teachers and students is the value of revision. Is the time to do revision, not just editing, not just cursory fixing things, the technical work, but the time to actually rethink ideas to balance them with the ideas of others, to incorporate the ideas of others. And I think a lot of this happens during the process of revision. One of the problems I think, of the challenges I think we have as teachers is finding time in our classes for that part of the process. 
Students uh, often complain about being asked to memorize or doing rote work that they just have to regurgitate on tests and back to the professors. And I don't think they realize we don't want that either. We'd much rather have them speak about their own ideas and about, um, about their own notions of any particular question. And so thinking about plagiarism, having students think about um, what's been written in the past and what scholars are doing is a way to convince them that that we're not here just to kind of fill their heads up with useless knowledge that we're here to make them better versions of themselves to move their own learning forward.